Hi, my name is Peace George. Welcome to Leadership Lessons with Peace George. Today we'll be talking about what leadership is and what it is not. Okay. <laughs> right. Leadership is not about power and authority. Leadership is not about being the boss. It's not a position. It's a responsibility. Leadership is not about micromanaging. It's about empowering and trusting your team to excel. Leadership is not about knowing all the answers. It is about asking the right questions and seeking input from others. Leadership is not about being infallible. It's about admitting mistakes and learning from them. All right then, it's time to debunk those myths. Leadership is very complex and oftentimes it's a misunderstood concept rife with myths and misconceptions and um, you know hopefully I'll do well debunking them the first myth of the day is that leaders are born not made hmm. leaders are born not made the reality is that there are some leaders that you can look at and say ah oh, they have innate qualities right but research suggests otherwise Warren Benes even a respected leadership scholar said leaders are not born they are made leaders are not born they are made leadership is a skill that anyone can hone it's a skill that can be nurtured through education through practice through mentorship and so there you have it leadership can be nurtured so it's safe to say the leaders are not just born they are also made right second myth of the day is that leaders have all the answers <laughs> do they have all the answers really do they buy it from somewhere <laughs> right so <clears throat> Effective leadership isn't about even having all the answers, to be honest. Um, I think it's more about asking the right questions and, you know, having the opportunity to even solve by probing, by analyzing. And in words of Peter Drucker, effective leadership is not about making speeches or being liked. Woo! Does that hit you differently? Because, you know, that's what we think it is, isn't it? You look at someone and because they can speak well and because they're eloquent and, you know, people like them. So we say, yeah, they have good leaders, effective leaders. But truth be told, that's not the case. Uh, Peter Drucker further says that leadership is defined by results, not attributes. So uh, <laughs> get over yourself. You just don't look at people and say, yeah, because this is happening, so this person is a good leader. No, because great leaders foster a culture of collaboration. And that might just be what is working for them. They leverage on the collective wisdom of their teams. That is what makes them effective. Nothing more. All right. So moving on to our third myth of the day. That leadership is all about power and control. <laughs> The reality is that it isn't in any way synonymous with power and control. It is about influence. It is about guidance. And, you know, I cannot but bring my mentor into this. John C. Maxwell wisely puts it that leadership is not about titles. It's not about positions or even flowcharts. It is about one life influencing another and so wherever you are in your life if you're influencing another life come on that's leadership and true leadership is rooted in trust it's rooted in collaboration it's rooted in respect not power not control okay not authoritarianism mm -mm. 
So leadership is not all about power and control. There you have it. Myth number four is that leaders do not show vulnerability. <laughs> I actually think that the leaders who show their vulnerability gain the trust of their followers or the trust of their team. Vulnerability is not a weakness. It's a strength in leadership. And in the words of Brainy Brown, vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having that courage to show up and be seen. Even when you have no control over the outcome, you still show up and be seen. And so authentic leaders openly acknowledge challenges. They openly admit mistakes. They, they openly seek help when they need it. And that's how they build trust and authenticity. Moving on, the fifth myth of the day. The leaders must always be extroverted and charismatic. <laughs> no way. <laughs> the reality is that leadership isn't confined to being an extrovert or an introvert. No, it's not confined to extroverts and charismatic individuals. Although we love them. I mean, why not? What's not to like? But that's not what leadership is about. You know, as Susan Cain, author of Quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking, pointed out. The power of introverts lies in their ability to listen, think deeply, and lead with empathy. And if you think about these things, they are important attributes for leadership. And so introverted leaders can excel. They really can by just leveraging on this unique strength. So yeah. You don't have to be extroverted or charismatic to be a great leader. Moving on, myth number six. That leadership is a solo journey. Hmm. Leadership is never a solo journey. It's a team effort. It's about, again, collaboration, delegation, teamwork. And in the words of Andrew Carnegie, Teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision. The ability to direct individual accomplishments towards organizational objectives. So effective leaders, at least the, wide one, the, the wise ones, build and support their strong teams. They, they work on making their teams strong. Okay? Because they understand that leadership is a team effort. All right, myth number seven, leadership is about doing, not being. Hey, <laughs> mm. leadership encompasses character as much as actions. And as James Coase's and Barry Post now offers of the leadership challenge noted, leadership is not about personality. Yeah, <laughs> it's about behavior an observable set of skills and ability. So leading by example is important. Embodying your values is crucial if you're going to effectively lead. So it's not about just what you do. It's way more than that. All right. Myth number eight, that leadership is only for the C-suite. Mm. <laughs> it's not oh, it's not limited to the upper echelons of organization no you know you can be a leader in your own um you know a working mom a stay home mom uh you know a boss at work whatever whatever leadership is not it's not a title as ralph nada puts it the function of leadership is really to produce more leaders not mere followers. And so if you're producing leaders in your home, you're producing leaders in your church, you're producing leaders on, on your street. There you have it. It's not about how many people follow you. Yeah, you can buy followers. Anything can make people follow you. But you know, it's way beyond that. It's about you raising more, producing more leaders, 
not more followers. So leadership qualities can be demonstrated at all levels. So, for instance, you're a stay-at-home stay at home mom. And, you know, you do well to lead well in your home. Or a dad, you do well to lead well. Or both parents. Parents do well to lead well in their homes. And then, you know, there is a leader in their home who in turn starts to lead other people wherever uh, that child finds himself. You know, that that's leadership, isn't it? And so you can demonstrate it at all levels, whether you are a cleaner in an organization or you're just a window cleaner or, you know, you're, you're in healthcare assistant and you're or you're a nurse or somebody else is a doctor it doesn't really matter what level you're operating from as long as you are producing more leaders people are there and you are influencing them positively that's all that matters